am assistant professor urmi shah from itict department of lg institute of engineering and technology so today we will be continuing with our fourth unit that is telephone networks so in the previous session we have discussed regarding various types of topologies that are used for telephonic network that is star topology mesh topology and hierarchical structure or hierarchical network of data network that we have seen in the previous session in today's session we will be moving ahead with the further topics of transmission numbering and charging plan for telephonic network how the different types of transmission numbering charging plans are involved in the telephonic network that we will be seeing in this session so basically let's start with the first topic the first topic deals with the transmission plan basically what is a transmission plan and why there is a need of transmission plan transmission plans are designed to provide efficient and quality transmission to the users or the customers who are utilizing the telephonic facilities while ccitt that we will be learning in your final chapter that is chapter number 6 of signaling of telephonic network that you will be uh, having the last unit in that we have an application name ccitt there you will be able to understand the usage of this transmission plan basically ccitt has drawn certain guidelines in its recommendation it is organizing the customer telephonic transmission plan system it is coordinating the transmission plans for the customers or for the users whom we are providing the services these are the maximum number of circuits to be used in an international calls has to be limited to the number 12 the next guideline is the originating and terminating international switching centers must not contain more than four international circuits between them in exceptional condition the total number of circuits may be extended to 14 but still in this case the international circuits are limited to four only so these are certain criteria or certain rules which ccitt has prepared for international transmission plans as well as for the customer who are initiating the call from our country to other countries so this is the limitation of number of users or the number of customers who are utilizing the international services the next thing which is included in transmission plan is ecos what is eco what is transmission loss budget so basically in eco in perfect line balance in four wire circuit causes part of signal energy transmitted in one direction to return in another the signal reflected to the speakers and at the circuit is called docker echo and at the listeners and is called listeners echo the other thing is regarding transmission loss budget the transmission loss is defined as the sum of attenuation taking place during transmission that is the transmission loss budget the other thing regarding transmission plan is transmission loss budget what is transmission loss budget basically whenever we are transmitting the data or signal from one end to another end there are chances of losses of signal now 
that losses of signal should be in certain amount of quantity only if more than that attenuation or signal loss is occurring then our signal won't be retrieved back so in that case we have to organize the transmission loss budget in a transmission loss budget basically there is a telephone connection and that telephone connection complete path includes from air path from source of voice to telephone receiver and from telephone transmitter to called subscribers ear via telephone and switch connection between them so this is the overall path included in transmission loss budget from air or from source of voice of telephone receiver then from telephone transmitter to the call subscriber's ear and that is why a telephony can switch connection between the two person or the two transmitter and receiver section the overall attenuation of this path can be expressed in terms of its overall loudness rating in decibel and that rating is basically measured in decibel that is nothing but overall loudness rating the transmission loss is measured by comparing the perceived loudness of sound received with that from a standard speech path the olr is usually ranging from minus no minus from plus 5 db to plus 15 db so this is the overall loudness rating for the transmission loss budget required it should be from 5 to 15 decibel in positive range this is regarding transmission loss budget now in transmission loss budget apart from this in transmission plan we also have attenuation basically what is attenuation the attenuation is the loss of signal between two wires or between two points from which the information was transmitted from one point to another point so the signal loss is in between the two points is known as attenuation basically the attenuation between the two wire line and the four wire line and between both the line is 3 db this is the ideal case thus the total attenuation from one two wire circuit to the other is 6 minus g4 db now what is g4 g4 is the net gain of one side of the four wire circuit g4 is given because this is a four wire circuit the net gain coming from one side the attenuation through the hybrid transformer from one side of the four wire circuit to the other is called as trans hybrid loss this trans hybrid loss is basically measured as 6 plus b e. 6 is the ideal number used for the calculation of attenuation in decibel and b is the bandwidth or we can say as the trans hybrid loss so this is the loss or the attenuation factor which is widely there or applicable in the telephony network now another thing over here is transmission plan in transmission plan where z is the impedance factor of two wire line n is the impedance of the balance network trans hybrid loss that is p is occurring due to the impedance mismatch between the two wire line and the balance network it is known as the balance return loss that is br the other factor is stability margin it is defined as the maximum amount of additional gain that is m that can be introduced in each direction of transmission without causing singing or without causing signal loss 
that is ls minus 2m ls is the signal loss or we can say is the net loss m is the factor of additional gain which is related to stability margin and trl is the total balance return loss so trans hybrid loss signal loss balance return loss stability margin all these are the factors which are related to attenuation present in transmission plan the second type of plan is the numbering plan basically in numbering plan we are dialing a number specifically such that we can contact that specific number and the originating call or the originating phone is going to dial the number to the destination caller id so basically in numbering plan we are identifying uniquely every subscriber connected to the telecommunication network so the requirements of numbering plan includes first is the local numbering plan basically in local numbering plan a common numbering scheme is required for local area so that the digits dialed to identify a given terminating exchange do not change with the exchange originating the call the common numbering scheme is called a linked numbering scheme in this scheme all the exchanges in a town were collectively identified by the name of town so basically it is doing the role of true caller which is right now we are partly using as an application in our mobile phones the second type is national numbering plan it is used for inter city and inter town distance connection where multi exchange areas are identified by number this national numbering plan is referred as subscriber trunk dialing that is what we call as std call and the third one is the international numbering plan it is required for international subscriber dialing that is isd call so basically local call or the local plan is used if we are in the same area same city why the national numbering plan is used if we are out of state if we are in the different city town distance is in a long range but it is in the same country while isd plans or international numbering plan is used whenever we are out of country or we are in some other country or we are in foreign countries so that is international numbering plan so these are the different sections of numbering plan based on the city distance or countries then we have the classes of numbering plan there are basically three types of classes of numbering plan that is open semi open and closed numbering plan now what are these three different types let's see that the first one is open numbering plan it is basically a non uniform numbering plan an open numbering plan is also known as non uniform numbering scheme and it allows wide variation in the number of digits that is to be used to identify a subscriber within a multi exchange area or within a country so basically it uses a scheme which can identify the subscriber who has dialed a call is in the same area or is in the same country the open numbering plan is also used in countries that is equipped with non director stroger switching system the numbering scheme reflects an exact image of the network structure now the other two different types of numbering scheme that is semi open and closed numbering plan that we will be discussing in the upcoming next session for the topics that we have covered today following other references which you can refer for the topics which we have covered today you can refer any of these books for the topics which we have discussed today thank you so much for watching this session in the upcoming session we will be continuing from the topics 
where we have left today that is classes of numbering plan open numbering plan we have already discussed today and in the next session we will be discussing about semi open and closed numbering plan thank you for watching this session thank you